Hi again everyone, hope you're all well. Uh, Russ Douglas 222 again. This is a quick intro for a compilation. I know a lot of you out there are quite fond of pest control compilations, so I've got one for you here. Just before I uh, reached a thousand subscribers, and thank you very much for everyone who subscribes. If you haven't already, please do so soon. If you click the subscribe button and the like button, then YouTube are more likely to remind you when I've got new videos up, which I've got a lot, a lot planned. If it wasn't for my broken body, I'd have <laughs> you'd have been getting inundated videos recently. But they're in the they're in they're on the way. They're in the pipeline. Last January I had uh, five or six videos on on my channel. I had six I think six subscribers, and I didn't think to uh, precede the vid pest control videos with a warning. So a few seconds ago, you'll have seen uh, a warning before this video. So this is a quick explanation. As you'll know, this is my FX Wildcat with the excellent PAR 008 LRF. Here I've got the sunshade, the shader eight. A year and a half ago when I started with uh, YouTube and started doing uh, filming on pest control uh, exploits, I was using this rifle, but I had a uh, Yukon Photon RT day and night scope. So coming up, there's uh, 45 rats and I think about uh, 22 feral pigeons. My first seven videos were all recorded in black and white on the in SD via the old scope, the Yukon Photon. They were a mix of footage from my Pulsar Quantum XQ30V handheld thermal imager. with a recorder plugged in. A mixture of that footage and footage from the scope. Basically, I've not bothered with my earliest two videos because they're very short. I've then taken my later five videos, cut them down a bit, and got it into hopefully what's hopefully a manageable size for you to watch. With the Yukon Photon RT, um, I, after a while, when, once I was doing started the editing, I realized, ah, I can speak to the scope and just chat away to it and it'll record my commentary. I can do the same with the, the PAR 008 LRF by taking off this side cap, which makes it not so weatherproof, so you can't do it in the rain, but I can take the side cap off and chat away and the internal microphone will pick up more of my commentary, other than just the sound of the gunshots. Hopefully you'll, you'll find this interesting.
And before I forget, um, you'll notice in these videos, at times I use lasers for aiming. So if I pop this fella on, and this side on, right, so we have a pair of red laser aiming dots. I've got these zero to coincide with the pellet impact at about nine meters. You'll see in the video, the two, dot get, two dots get closer and closer together until they become one dot at nine meters. You'll see at one point in the video where there's, um, there's one dot showing because this particular laser eats, seems to eat through batteries a lot faster than this side. But um, even if one of these fails, you know the, the vertical crosshair is uh, where the pellet will be uh, aligned to strike. And if the dot is low down on, the, on one side, then you can work out where the pellet will strike. This 3D printed bracket is only £13. And I bought that from smwengineering.co.uk from Stu Wardby. This design is my idea to have a pair of lasers mounted uh, to coincide for short range targeting of vermin especially rats, when they're running around and uh, you haven't got time to shoulder your rifle and, uh, and uh, aim through the scope. My idea turned into a 3D design by Stu Wardby, 3D printed by him, a pair of uh, lasers, nine pounds each from, nine pound odd from Amazon, uh, low profile Picatinny lasers. And the only thing that's a little bit of a fiddle is these little tiny grub screws for wind engine elevation. They are a little bit tricky to get to get spot on for your point of aim at nine meters, um, but they do the job. And I'll put the links to both the bracket and the lasers. I'll put the link down below because you'll see this throughout the video. Right, the wildcat zeroed at twenty-five meters, so I've zeroed the twin muzzle-mounted lasers at uh, nine meters because that's the height of the apex of the roof where the ferrules tend to lose to give me head. Just doing a zero check. This is at the back of the barn looking through some um, chicken wire. One or two roosting birds visible, but I'll have to shoot them later from outside. Back in the main barn, and just before I left, one rat, rat spotted in the distance with a thermal. This is a view through the Photon RT night vision scope. Smallish rat. Pop. And down it goes. Back in the second barn, the faint heat source is a nest, which I shot the pigeon in that nest last week. So I've now been back twice and found rats in there. That was shot from about 35 metres away. Crawled out, dead. This is just above my head with the twin lasers. And one dot shows that I'm on 9 meters zero. I don't want to dazzle the birds, so I'm just going for a heart and lung shot here. Mm -hmm. Quickly refocus the RT scope. And the floor in front of me. And there's the bird dead. Oh, that's feral. That's the view of it through the thermal. I'm scanning around. A second feral roosting there, tucked in behind a beam. Moved a few meters further away. This is about 15, 20 meters away from the feral. Bang, down it goes. Flapped around for a little bit, and unfortunately, it didn't flap enough to flap out of that uh, metal gutter. So, uh, I'm going to have to recover that one with ladders sometime. This is the view through the thermal. The feral are dead in front of me, and the, a dead rat in the distance. I've uh, missed recording. This is at the back of the barn. There's a rat down the side of a gutter. Solid shot from behind, back of its uh, shoulders. I think it's pretty sure it's dying, but it didn't fall. It scurried away at the back of some uh, corrugated tin. And then probably dropped dead. Experience. Scanning around. There's another one. This is about 30, 35 meters away from where I'm standing. Braced against the concrete wall. Headshot, and down it goes.
This is a different day, that same X pigeon nest again. 35 meters. Bang, squealing, climbs out, falls to the ground. We covered that one later. This is down the side of some seed sacks. No activity on this occasion, but uh, you can see from the lasers, a little bit short range. This is in the outer shed. Having some ferals, getting rid of them one by one. Going for heart and lung shots to avoid dazzling them with the laser and scaring them off. We're going for head shots. Heart and lung shots are fine because it's a 177 rifle, it's pretty close range, so it drills through the breastbone. This is a different day. Scanning with the thermal when I got there. Four rats in the distance. Three on the walls and one on top of a pile of grain. There's one on the grain. I wanted to leave that till last. And shoot the distant ones first. A little bit of shakiness here as I uh, embraced on a wall and had to reach forward and up the mag from six times to twelve times. There we go. Ready for the shot. I was waiting for it to stand still. Copying the rifle, checking it out, kind of looking around, and it's dead. Oh, and there's another one peeking out the crack to see what the commotion is. Another headshot, rolled around a bit. Didn't recover though, either of those two. A few minutes later, another rat comes out, number four. This one scurries into the crack before it probably died. Now, this is around the seed sacks. This is only about eight to nine meters away. And there's a couple of rats. Each night I go there, I hear them scurrying around. But they're a bugger to, uh, to shoot. They don't stand still for long. And the thermal actually sees the faint heat source inside the sack. But I can't shoot through a plastic sack. This one was back and forth. And then it stood still for a while, just long enough. Pop, and went. Make a bit of a squealy noise. Scanning around, and I just glimpsed this one. Let me pause when I raise the rifle up slightly from my fist. You can just see the top of its back. To the offset of the scope on the FX Wildcat, got to aim slightly high here. It's just short range. Pop, and down it goes. For this last minute or so, this is an outside shed. This is just clearing out feral pigeons. There goes one. And the remaining one I couldn't get because of uh, it's back to me. I could only just see a few feathers through its tail. Um, so this is a, a compilation of close range feral pigeons. Um, one laser was um, flicking off at times, the battery was failing, but even with one laser, um, and the laser's coincident with the vertical crosshair, um, that's 9 meters. Further it is to the left, close to the ranges. Um, and uh, you see you don't need both lasers if you know whether they're, they're zeroed to match the crosshair. So, one by one, this is popping pigeons mainly with heart and lung shots, so as not to, uh, there's a little second laser on there, so as not to um, dazzle them and scare them away. And um, this last one flew for a few seconds and landed just a few, about 20 feet behind me. Hi there, Russ Douglas 222 here. I've got, this is my sixth um, air gun pest control video. Vermin control in this case, rats and feral pigeons on a barn at the request of a farmer. The farmer discovers he has a vermin problem, he's got a, basically it's his responsibility to uh, do something about it and get rid of it. They call in, uh, the first point of call is to call in uh, pest control, which is in, uh, poison uh, bait traps, um, and the rats unfortunately often ignore them, as you'll see in these videos. Um, so I'm and I've got basically a compact portable 
non-FAC uh, air rifle, in this case it's an FX Wildcat, less than 12 foot pound. Um, and I'm spotting the rats in their handheld thermal imager, the Pulsar Quantum XQ30V thermal from Scott, Scott Country International. And uh, I'm targeting them with a Yukon Photon RT night vision scope from Optics Warehouse. And um, I've got to try and prevent myself falling over, I am on crutches, I am disabled. To try and prevent myself falling over, I have a head torch, which is a great little gadget, HP 25R head torch by Phoenix. And uh, all this together hopefully makes me reasonably efficient in the dark. These videos are recorded in total darkness and um, I'm still uh, trying to coordinate getting the videos together so uh, bear with me and uh, like and subscribe would be great. Um, when I'm done I uh, try gather together as many of the rats as I can with grabbers, long handle grabber, I ain't touching these things and I leave them for, to the farmer to uh, dispose of. Thanks very much, enjoy the video. Thermal told me there's a heat source here, and I've just glimpsed its eye. I'm not sure if it's a rat or a roosting pigeon. There's movement there. I pop the lasers on. Ah, they, they're zeroed at 10 meters, so that's just over 10 meters. See if the light will get it to pop its head up. And it does. Still not sure if it's a roosting bird or a rat. I'm going to have to move to a different vantage point to get this one, I think. I think it's a roosting feral. I'll be back. And it's a rat. Uh, Got it. Pop, pop another one in to be sure. Can't scare it away this time. So I'll pop the lasers on. Get the hold over spot on. I missed the one that was moving at high speed down that pole. Clever little buggers. That's five down tonight anyway. So far. Off the thermal, I can see one down here. 25 meters away, so. Pop the mag up. Safety. Safety off. That's a dead rat. That's number six tonight. And there's one again. Number seven. That was sniffing round its two dead mates. Spotted in the thermal, straight away dead. Still a couple round this corner. Twenty five meters away. Got it. And the activity in the corner has quietened again. So I'm going to go and retrieve all these dead rats. I think I got that one. Let's go and have a look. Here in the video, I'm looking for the rat I shot in the night vision scope. I can't see it, but I can see it through the thermal. So I eventually popped the head torch on and grabbed it with the long handle grabbers. Don't know if I got that. Oh. <laughs> Got 
got it the second time. Oh, two more over there. Here's a prime example of a rat completely avoiding the poison bait traps, so they're pretty ineffective in this location anyway. Gotcha. That was a solid shot. I'll take screenshots of all the ones I couldn't recover for the farmer, so he can uh, get them with a ladder. No more movement there. Good. One feral in exactly the same place as last week. Focus. And aim slightly high. Taking the safety off helps. Foot. And there it lies. One dead feral. Cool. Nothing else in the shed visible at all. Oh, oh. Not quite deceased. Lasers on, get the hold of the spot on. You may. Should have shot this one right here, but uh, always uh, miss my chance. Where did that rat go? Then of course, I forced it by rushing it because I didn't want it to escape. Gotcha. This was taken before I was recording commentary with the, uh, the thermal video recorder. And uh, two more rats spotted here, behind the machinery in the distance and on the far wall. But the thermal glimpses them through the machinery. Those rats proved a bit elusive, so uh, rather than rush them, I uh, left them for a bit, went and checked for ferals in the outside shed. Russ Douglas 222 here. That feral was there, and I didn't want to scare it away by popping the lasers on, but if I pop them on now, that's with a pellet strike at this range, so you can see why I did the holdover that I did, and not a, not a peep now, so I can't see it down the deck, but it is dead somewhere in there, hidden from view, and... Um, one less feral fouling the place.
at number two. <laughs> Patience is rewarded. Uh, a second pellet just to make sure. There's a heat source up there, but I just saw one stick its head out in the corner of those uh, sacks or whatever. Oh, just glimpsed one here. There's one in the corner. There it is. I hope this is recording sound. That's two definite ferals and it's visible on the outside. It was visible. Oh. And the farm cap. Don't want to scare them away with a laser. So I'll pop it on here. Right, that's where I've got to aim. Yes. It's busy dying. Let's see if I can help it. Oh, and it dropped. And that, out of reach from me, is the dead rat I shot earlier. I've definitely seen one, well, I've seen three tonight, and definitely got one so far. through the thermal, let's see if I can spot this. Where is it going? Oh, it's there. There. Maybe it's near 30 metres. Oh, I got it that time. Didn't realise there was a crevice in that rock. Yeah, there it goes. That is a rat, clear as day, on the other side of a blue polythene curtain. Problem is, through the night vision, I won't be able to see it. This is where a thermal scope would come in handy. Well, I believe it's a rat, clear as day as well. Oh yeah, there it is sniffing around. Let's see what I can see through the night vision scope. So, the rat is about here. Let's have a look through the thermal. Through the thermal, the rat is moving slightly. Oh, here it comes. I think I might have got that. There's a rat over there on the far wall, just behind the 
off machinery. No way I'm going to shoot it through those cables and pipes. Hopefully it'll venture out in a second. Oh, I can see it moving. Right, one clear right on the far corner. Still nothing in that crevice. And there's still one behind that machine somewhere. Believe it or not, I can actually see that rat through the prongs of the combine harvester. There, on the far wall. I've moved position, and there's a day glow rat. Thank you, Thermal. Let's give it a go. This short session was in the evening after a day's work. So I was a little bit tired, a little bit unsteady on my feet and uh, didn't have the trigger sticks with me so not the cleanest of kills. Lessons learned. A solid hit. This is back on permission one and I've popped by on the off chance to get some rabbits but there are none, the rain is on. But there's a couple of pigeons, so I'll see how many of these I can get and not scare the others away. So this is indoor stuff with a sub 12 foot pound 177 Wildcat Mark 1 and the Photon RT night vision scope. Usual kit for rats, but this is broad daylight, so we'll give it a go. Right, there are four pigeons here. Let's see if we can get one or two of these. Steel backstop. 17 meters range. Uh, that's one. There's one over there, nestling on a beam. There he is. Safety off. Three dead fowls and my litter picker. Job done for now. <laughs> ah, the grain is gone and there is a rat. Oh, and there's a rat there as well. me have rested that's about 30 meters away. Let's get the zoom on. I think that was a good shot. So that's the crevice in which I just shot a rat, and I think it has died in the crevice. There was one in that corner, and there was a third one over here. The thermal is nice and distinct today. I think last time I used this I might have spoiled it by breathing on the lens accidentally because it was very indistinct. But today it's crisp. This is pitch 
pitch darkness of course and the noise is the wind rattling the uh, the barn doors oh there's a rat on top of those sacks that's the rat of the sort Good shot. Uh, there's the rat. The second rat I shot this morning. Not moving. I'm still hoping to find this third one. Apologies if this uh, thermal is shaky this morning. My left leg is shaking like crazy. It's a spinal injury thing. I've got clonus. So, um, and it's particularly prevalent this morning. For some reason. Oh, I switched the thermal off, or the recorder off, then I saw a rat there. Switched it back on, and the rat has gone, but it's behind that corner in the far corner. Ah, there it is. Shooting time. There's a rat here somewhere. Ah, I see the rat. That's the rat's back rat's backside. I hadn't cocked it from my last shot. Damn. So. Got it. Thanks very much for watching. Hope that was interesting for you. So a fair few rats bit the dust there. That was my, also my first um, professional pest control efforts. I had BASC insurance, but I also had to get professional pest control insurance because BASC doesn't cover you for that. So that became my first uh, professional pest control work. Tip for you all out there is I've now changed BASC plus professional pest control insurance. For the time being, I've changed to SACS. I'll put a link to that down below because SACS for, for one fee a year. As long as pest control isn't your full-time occupation, they cover you for both amateur and professional pest control work and general shooting. So if I go to the club or I'm out doing some just pest control as a favor or whatever, or just some zeroing practice, then it covers me for that too. I have another video coming up very, very shortly. Uh, literally, I'll be recording it this afternoon, hopefully, uh, finishing off. Par partially, it's a review of uh, the MTM gun vise, which you'll see off to the side here, and you saw above my head, and but the box in previous videos. And partly it's a video about cleaning the barrel of my 17 HMR rimfire. And also, if I show you this bipod, that's rather nifty looking bipod. I've got another video coming up introducing you to the UTG Super Duty bipod. I'll be filming that hopefully this afternoon as well. So this, this fella is a vast improvement on my old standard bi bipods. So I'll film that in a minute. So uh, my, that's my top tip at the moment. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And uh, there'll be lots more coming up very, very shortly. Kit reviews, bipods, accessories, accessories from Eagle Vision Cam to go with the GoPro, 7525 GoPro holder for filming through a day scopes. And that includes the 12 millimeter lens, special lens that Eagle Vision can do for the GoPro to get the, uh, the zoom factor and the field of view right. Got that coming up with zeroing the rim fires. So I'll be revealing that very shortly. When, when FX come off their summer holidays, at some point I'll uh, be revealing my uh, new rifle and uh, doing a full review of that and then some pest control. So thanks very much for tuning in and uh, see you again soon. Um, 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 is, um, um, so, um, 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 so, um, um, and, uh, uh, um, 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 um,